Your Excellencies, Your Eminences, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, I'm very happy to share with you today a few words on the subject of possibilities, occasions for missionary activity in today's Africa. Today's subject is perhaps a continuation of the historical review of yesterday's topic, evangelization then and now, although it's not a, a list of uh, historical events. Having looked at the question of evangelization uh, during the 19th century and the first part of the 20th century, and then during the first 50 years of SICAM to the present day, we can now examine perhaps where we stand today and look to the future decades of evangelization as it concerns our continent of Africa. I should begin perhaps by saying that as a missionary of Africa, a white father, I might be expected to be an expert on this subject of missionary in Africa. But how can anyone really know the whole of this subject in so vast and diverse a church as that of Africa? My own mission has been and still is in the north a region which is very different from the rest of sub-Saharan Africa where we are, most especially since the independence years of the mid 20th century. In the Muslim countries of the Maghreb, the church is still in a stage of primary evangelization, anew, and it's likely to remain so for some time yet. Enormous patience, understanding and discretion are required by the missionaries who bear witness to Christ in that region, almost entirely inhabited by the followers of the Islamic faith. For the rest of the continent, the possibilities are greater, at least for now. Before turning then to Africa south of the Sahara and the different opportunities for missionary activity open to us there, here, and from here, let us clarify exactly what we mean by that term, missionary activity. I would suggest that we consider it from four distinct but overlapping ways of living mission. The first is the classic understanding of the past. Missionaries coming from outside Africa, mostly from Europe and North America, though increasingly now from Asia and Latin America as well, having brought the good news to much of the continent, have continued their apostolic work while the local churches find their feet and they take on, local churches take on, all the pastoral responsibilities incumbent in their establishment. Today, there is hardly anywhere in sub-Saharan Africa where there is that same need for missionaries from beyond to introduce the faith. It is already well established in every region. And yet, the continuing presence of these missionaries is a valuable witness to the universality of the church, a sign of solidarity and an encouragement to the outside world to think globally and to go out to all nations. At the same time, we should not become complacent about the importance of indigenous clergy and religious and lay workers gradually assuming their place in the pastoral care of the local churches. Let us then look at the realities and the possibilities within the continent. Much of the church in Africa today is sufficiently well established to be missionary itself, seeking missionary vocations among the young men and women called to be sent to the Lord's vineyard 
elsewhere in Africa where the harvest is plentiful and the laborers few. Long past are the days when priests and religious were all called to remain in their churches of origin, to build them up from scratch. More and more do we see the church in Africa sending missionaries, priests, sisters and brothers, and laity to continue the work of evangelization elsewhere in the continent, sometimes sent to neighboring dioceses, often in the same linguistic or cultural areas, but also further afield. That is indeed as it should be. If there is any difficulty in that, I would say that it is mainly in the financing of such missionary work and the training of the missionaries coming from churches which have often limited resources. For that, we may continue to require aid from beyond. As we know, such aid is available through pontifical missionary societies and many other benefactors. Every baptized person is called by Christ to share the good news of the love of God, to be missionary, whether mission ad gentes or ad intra, whether beyond the borders, far away, or in the home, the family, the parish, the diocese of their birth. The work of evangelization or more and more today of re-evangelization is never ended. Not only does it involve the wonderful work done by so many of our faithful in the deepening and transmitting of the faith within the church of living, of church, of living the liturgy of the church in its fullest sense. It needs also to go to those of our brothers and sisters who are separated in faith from us through ecumenism and especially through interreligious encounter. This is a major challenge for many since it requires not only a sure knowledge and commitment to our own faith, but also an understanding of both the faith and the culture of the other. It also demands a spirit of respect in the ways in which such encounter might be approached. To that extent, do we prepare our faithful for such opportunities when they arise? Are they willing to share with others? Or are they uncertain or afraid to engage in such local daily mission? And now I would like to take our understanding of missionary activity in today's Africa to another level. How often do we forget when speaking among ourselves about our missionaries that they are not just those who have come to us from afar to evangelize us, as in the past? Have we yet reached the stage of maturity in our church, in our churches, at every level, by which the word missionary automatically makes us think of those of our own whom our Lord sends elsewhere to the ends of the earth, to all nations, answering his call. Are we not perhaps still too much in the consolidation phase of our own churches and our own societies to remember that across the seas there are those like the Macedonians in the dream of St. Paul in Acts 16, 9, who are crying out to Africa to come and re-evangelize them. Yes, it is happening. Yes, our bishops and churches are responding generously to the missionary activity of the whole church. Yes, our neighbors to the north are slowly adapting to the reality that Africa is now evangelizing Europe, for example. But maybe there are hesitations in sending and setting out into the deep waters that lie beyond. 
Maybe we forget the Lord's injunction from the very beginning to go out and share the good news. Matthew 28, 18, 20. In his letter of last month, for the extraordinary missionary month this October, baptized and sent the Church of Christ on mission in the world, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, reminds us that this world is where the church is sent and not necessarily inside or outside of our local context. I quote, we received this gift freely and we share it freely without excluding anyone. Matthew 10, 8. It is also a many faceted, many faceted mission covering the sharing of the good news in its spiritual, material, and human dimensions. In one of their pastoral letters of the 15th of July, 2013, the bishops of Burkina Faso noted that the African continent was facing a sharp increase in religious practices that is not accompanied by the requirement to conform social behavior to the precepts and religious commandments. They deplored a faith that had no impact on the existential sphere, and that is the social, political, economic, and cultural spheres. In short, they disapproved of a faith that brings no transformation in society. This was the central invitation of the Second Synod for Africa, which called on African churches to commit themselves to the service of reconciliation and to justice and peace. That invitation reminds us that the political, economical, and cultural spheres are precisely the possibilities for missionary activity. Missionary activity here should be understood in the sense of an evangelization that all are invited to take part in. It's essential, therefore, that the lay faithful should, as earlier stated, get more involved in these missionary opportunities that need to be evangelized in order to help bring transformation to many African societies. Let us not forget that Jesus in his prayer, John 17, 15, was not asking the Father to take us out of the world. Perhaps there is a double invitation here for the church in Africa, one that calls for consideration to be apostles, apostles in the world, in all its aspects. We cannot ignore the mission to the poor, nor can we ignore the mission to the rich and powerful. All are God's children, whether they know it or not. We cannot ignore the mission to work for justice, for peace, and for the saving of our planet from the environmental destruction that threatens it. That requires evangelizing those who are involved in conflict, leaders, military, yes, even so-called terrorists. The call to conversion is the church's strength rather than the weapons of the world. The sincerely held convictions of those who do not share our faith. We transmit a call to unity, to understanding and conversion, to the opening to the Holy Spirit of truths that are often already present for others and for ourselves. Finally, a word about our relations with our mission to the many new independent churches that we find mushrooming in Africa and to which some of our faithful are drawn. Not counting those who abuse religious convictions for straight monetary gain or power, we can ask ourselves, do we not too often see them as a threat, as the enemy, whom we must oppose, condemn, counter? 
Do we not sometimes encourage our faithful to avoid them, to mistrust them, and to treat them all as the work of the devil? If so, and we know how easy it is to do that, can we say that we are truly proclaiming the love of neighbor, the love of that other who is different, the love that Jesus both commanded of us and himself lived for and died for? Only by seeking and sharing that infinite love and by refusing to be slaves to enmity and hatred can we truly walk shoulder to shoulder with other believers or non-believers and with Jesus on the path to the Father. That doesn't happen by itself. We have to work on it and even offer the other cheek sometimes. That is mission. The possibilities for missionary activity are therefore before us as they have always been. There are new ones, true. But most of them are the same in spirit and in nature as they have always been. Africa changes, the world changes, the church changes in many ways. But the message we are sent to bring to others never changes. Let us recognize that and live our mission in and from Africa, that unchanging spirit of the Lord. Thank you.